Hey everyone. So it's been a while since I've made a video, and part of the reason for that is the project I'm about to talk about tonight. So we're looking at my Tandy 4825SX, but this video is not about the 4825. It's just going to serve as an access point for this. This is my Altair 8800 kit computer. A friend of mine saw this and thought immediately of me and my retro computer collection, all of the machines of, in which you've seen in various videos, and thought that this machine deserved a place in my collection. And once I took one look at the kit, I couldn't have agreed more, and I continually thank him for spending my money for me. So, if you're watching this, thank you again for spending my money. Um, the experience actually was really awesome, and this, this kit was excellent. So this is a kit by Chris Davis um, via his website and very humorously named company name, Adwater and Stir. I'll put a link in the video description. Uh, this machine emulates an Altair 8800 on an Arduino and includes the Arduino and all the uh, software preloaded and also includes a custom printed circuit board and all the components necessary to make a working Altair 8800 emulated machine. Um, this machine works just like an Altair. The panel lights and switches and everything work just as you would expect. Um, this particular model is the Pro Kit. There are two kits, Standard and Pro. And the Pro Kit includes a VT100 emulator card which allows you to connect a PS2 keyboard and a VGA monitor. For the sake of kind of faux reality and working with it via a terminal like you might have back in the 70s, I'm going to be working with this uh, via serial port and that's why the 4825 is booted up. So let's get looking at it. So looking at the unit you can see there are all of the various address data switches and all of the various control switches at the bottom along with all of the address and data line status LEDs and the processor status LEDs. Now I am new to Altair so I've always wanted to play with one but never wanted to spend the money on one um, and really was interested mainly because the Altair was the machine that uh, designers of the TRS-80 Model 1 and a lot of the other uh, first microcomputers of the late 70s had and really was the first microcomputer you could really build and have in your house. Um, it was very popular with hobbyists, so um, I've never had the experience to work with one and not wanting to put the money into a real one, I figured that this was the way to go when it was pointed out to me. So this kit is an uh, acrylic case that you assemble, and then this front panel is custom made and provided with a kit. Um, behind it is a custom printed circuit board, and it includes everything you need to build it. It includes the LEDs, the switches, transistors, resistors, um, you know, the card and the Pro Kit, the VT100 card, which you also have to assemble the Arduino itself, headers, everything you need to do. Um, if you're reasonably adept with a soldering iron, you should pick this up. So it looks to be in the style of the Altair. The blue is familiar, but of course it doesn't look exactly like an Altair. Um, and let's take a look at the back of the machine, shall we? So on the back you can see there's not a whole lot in terms of excitement toward the top, although you do get a glimpse of how the case is held together, these various screws and fasteners. But what is interesting is this panel at the bottom. And this is specific to the Pro Kit, includes an audio output, an SD card slot, a power jack, the serial port, and then here you see the PS2 monitor port and VGA port. And those are the real things that the Pro Kit comes with. Uh, the standard kit does have this little USB port here, I don't want to zoom too far, and the serial port. Um, but does not have the VGA bits. And the card that the VGA and PS2 connector are on emulates a VT100 terminal. So for my sake, uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to be using the serial port like I mentioned, um, but that's pretty much what it looks like. The ST card has a lot of disk images and other great things on it so you can get started right away. Just like a regular Altair, you can in fact use the front panel switches to load a program uh, just like you would on a real Altair and there are a couple of games on it that actually use the front panel LEDs but in my case I figured just for the purposes of this quick demo I would just use the disk boot ROM that's included. Alright we're spun back around now. Uh, one, two things I didn't mention that do come with it, an AC power adapter and a USB cable. Um, by default you can just plug this thing into any Windows, Windows or 10 laptop or Mac or anything else with a USB cable, power it and access the serial console through the USB cable. Because I want to use the secondary serial port on the back, I need to tell it that I'm going to do so on boot up. So I'm going to set binary value 2, which is switch 1, and then I'm going to hold the deposit switch up and turn it on. 
and sorry for the funky hand movement, I'm holding the camera. So with it on, you can see that the system is now in a default state, and what I'm going to do now is set the camera down and we will take a look at operating this thing and getting a disk booted up. So now that we're spun back around, I hope my screen is visible. All right, let's see this thing in action. Uh, we're going to load a disk, CPM, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to load the disk boot ROM, and we're going to load the CPM disk, and then we're going to tell the ROM to boot. The AUX1 and AUX2 switches are pivotal here. The AUX1 switch is used to load any of the built-in, the ROM-based or otherwise programs, and get the thing to boot. Um, the AUX2, for the mode I'm going to be using it in, will allow me to mount or unmount a disk image and also see a list of, list of images available. So first things first, with all switches down, let's take a look at the ROMs and such available. So as you can see from the printout on the screen here, uh, there's a number of things. We have a calculator, Kill the Bit, which is a game that plays in the front panel here, a version of Pong that does the same, a version of Pong that will play in your terminal, a couple of versions of BASIC, the MITS programming system, the disk boot ROM, which we'll be using with my mouse, and uh, music, if you've got something connected to the headphone port, uh, CPU diagnostic, a hard disk boot ROM, etc. So for my purposes here, um, I'm going to now look at the list of disk images available. And to signal to the system that I want AUX2 to control the disks, I flip number 12, switch 12 up, and push the AUX2 switch. And this isn't a directory per se of disk images, this just reads a text file. So if you add your own, you got to update the text file. But anyway, um, these are the disk images available, CPM, Altair DOS, etc. Uh, these are the binary values that you set, just as laid out as they are on the switches, uh, least significant bit to the right, um, that you would select to do this. So in my case, I would switch 12 up. I want the CPM disk, which is disk 1. Okay, we'll set binary value 1, aux 2 down, and we've mounted disk 1. Now I want to boot the ROM. So the disk ROM, switch 3 up, 1000 in binary, aux 1 down. There we are we have a copy of CPM running and this is this machine emulates the Altair 8800 as it was so that is an Intel 8080 processor and 64k of RAM at runtime. Uh, it actually emulates a 512k uh, RAM but the other RAM is basically used for storing all the other goodies that you saw uh, when I flipped AUX1 down. So here we go for example I have a demo and what is your name? Since I'm typing this on a Tandy computer my name will be Rummy Buzzard. Hello, you running buzzard. That is all this program does. And of course, there are some other things on there. There's an Othello game. Uh, the other disks have things like SuperCalc and WordStar and things like that. And you can load any other CPM disks you want on there too. So I'm going to say yes, I'll go first. Um, and since I'm star, I want to go to it's three space five, right? Yeah. So I don't know if that was the way around. I can't. I never remember which is first. Um, so. We're not going to play this very long anyway, but you can see I can, and like a lot of older games at the time, you know, I make my move and then it essentially redraws the entire board for me and asks me to move again. But I digress. And if I look to see what else is on here, um, I can, and my old CPM commands work. And I can do all of this great stuff. If I want to load MBASIC is on here, um, I want to say that there are at least a couple of basic games on here. Okay, and there we go. Now I have a tic-tac-toe -to game in BASIC. Um, and type zero if you want me to go first. Why don't you go right ahead? So he did one, so I'm just going to go one. You're not going to watch me play this whole game of tic-tac-toe, although as we learned in war games, the only winning move is not to play. Or, in this case, let the computer win. Of course, I can list the program, and it works just like any 8080-based BASIC and CPM. break the listing. Oh, I guess I can after the listing ends. And of course if I want to reset it and start again I can just stop and reset. Put the switches back down. Alright, what other do we have in the disk department? And again that's uh, switch 12 up, box 2 down. So here we have uh, Zork. Oh, let's do that. So I want, uh, looking at the screen here, oh it's 1000. Oh just like my boot run. Okay great. Disk 08 Zork loaded, perfect. Okay, now, switch 12 down, but my disk boot ROM is also, uh, switch with 1000 binary, so here we go, disk boot. Hey, CPM again, but this time, 
There's a work one, two, and three on there. And if you remember on my Model 16 with CPM, Zork 1 was the game that I moved over by the serial port. Yeah, let's see. Oh, there's a leaflet. Let's, let's read that. I took it. Welcome to Zork. You've heard me read this before. I'm not going to read it again. Why is affirmative? And then, of course, there is... Stop. Reset. If I just look at this here, we'll just go to 16K basic. That's 110110. One, one, oh. So you can see I'm lining up the bits right here. 0, 1, 1, 0. And memory size, I'll just push enter for the max. Okie data line printer. And there I am at 48K free RAM for basic. So obviously, this is 16K basic on a 64K system. And so this works just like any other Microsoft basic. Uh, it's pretty pretty standard, although actually I found that there's no CLS or home command on any of these. Oh, that's right. I don't remember how to back up. Eh. Altair rocks. So that's basic. Um, it's really cool to have a direct view into what's happening in the machine and direct control over the various uh, registers and memory and everything else that's going on from a set of switches and not from an assembler like I'm used to. Um, so this was a neat way to bridge the gap for me between um, wondering what something like this was like and not. Um, I'll mention that building the machine, uh, again it came as a kit, it was probably about five hours of soldering um, between the, the two boards that I had to put together. Uh, one, the big board that has all the LEDs and switches on there, and then the other board that has the VT100 emulator on it. That board um, has an SD card slot that I managed to, in my usual bull in China shop way, break. Um, so I wrote uh, Chris Davis. I had read that he has great support, and all I wanted to do was ask him if I could buy another one. I wasn't going to tell him that it was missing. I wasn't going to do something dishonest. I broke it. I'm stupid. I'll just ask him if he can tell me where to buy it, because all of my usual places that I look didn't have an SD card slot that seemed to match the spec of his, and I really didn't want to go out of my way to adapt something and ruin the the kind of the the culture of the kit, I guess. Um, so I wrote him, and I said, look, I broke the SD card slot. Um, is there any way you can tell me where I can buy another one? Um, you know, I don't, I just need to finish the kit, otherwise the kit is up and running and I love it. And uh, instead of selling it to me or telling me where to buy it, he said, I'll just send you one. Um, and in reading a lot of the feedback uh, on his website and elsewhere, that seems to be a pretty common refrain. Um, people are pretty happy with him. And then I'll say the kit went together great. Um, I didn't have any issues with anything. Every, everything was there. There were no missing pieces. So if you have the money, the money this kit was 250 I want to say, somewhere right around $250. Um, it was money well spent just for the time doing it. Um, this is something that I will have other videos on, but I wanted to just kind of outline and share here. Until next time, stay cool.